Okay, before I start this video, I just have to let everybody know, no, I have not fallen off the wagon. Yes, we are shooting mocktails. There's no booze here in the studio today, though I do occasionally shoot booze at restaurants, but I always do so within the context of plenty of accountability. So never fear, we have no wagon falling offage going on today. What's shaking bacon? I'm Joni Simon. Welcome to my studio. This is where I do food photography. So if you're into that, you go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And today we are delving into the world of drinks because to be honest, this is something that people ask me about all the time because drinks can be complicated, right? We're dealing with glass, which is a reflective surface. We're dealing with liquids, which can be a little unpredictable also when it comes to light. And there's ice and there's garnish and there's styling. There's just so much to think about. So I wanna break down for you some of my favorite strategies, tips and tricks in order to effectively capture drinks so that they look fabulous, that they look professional and that you are super proud of your images. So if that sounds good to you, you stick around. And for today's video, we have some extra special glassware that we are using to show off how to photograph drinks that's what we're gonna be photographing with here today and these are by fifth and Fox a fabulous company that you can purchase these glasses online at Amazon I've got it linked down in the description box below and they have actually generously sponsored this video here today helping make this channel and videos like this possible for you to view so thank you to fifth and Fox but they make these gorgeous glasses with this fantastic like raised gradient which just makes for a really interesting visual impact especially for photography and how much do i love this little edge when light hits details like this on glass i mean it just dances it sparkles it makes magic these scotch whiskey glasses are a european design exclusively by fifth and fox and you get a set of two crystal drinking glasses this is a perfect gift and they are ultra clarity 100 percent lead-free glassware it's great for bourbon great for anything on the rocks men and women this is a great drinking glass and i cannot wait to start shooting Tip number one is to make sure you are working with a clean glass. We don't have any fingerprints, no smudges, no lipstick marks, <laughs> no water spots. So your best friend in this situation is gonna be a set of exam gloves. Yes, very fancy, right? We bust out the exam gloves. Now I like these better than maybe microfiber gloves because they don't have any sort of lint on them. They're gonna be lint free, but they still won't leave any fingerprints behind. They're great and easy to work with. And they're also a little bit grippy, so you don't accidentally drop your glass. So I bust these out after I've washed my glass in soap and water to get off any sort of water spots, anything else that's on there that I don't want. And then from there, I get out my microfiber towel and these are great. They are low lint, they are easy to work with. They really absorb the water and I just wipe out the glass and make sure to really get in there and overanalyze and really look for any sort of smudges or issues. Now, if these came straight out of the box, like these did, then they're already pretty much ready to go. But if they have been used or they have been sitting around on a shelf collecting dust, then you make sure, bust it out, make them nice and pristine and clean. And then because you get the gloves on, you're not gonna leave any little extra friends behind. Now you might end up with little pieces of lint and things like that. Well, that's when you get out some sort of fan brush or paint brush and you can just whisk those away easily. Tip number two is in your planning process, think about the kind of ice you wanna use. Now you can of course use the ice from your refrigerator, that's fine. But if you're going for a high-end cocktail shoot, one thing I know about bartenders is that they are extremely picky about their ice. Clarity is important, shape is important, size is important. All those things are taken into consideration. So now, of course, you can buy some fake ice cubes. I do have these, and when I shoot certain things where these are hiding and you can't really see them super well, maybe it's a drink that's kind of cloudy and these are just kind of peeking through, then these are great. But they definitely do look fake if they're otherwise like fully seen. And so if I'm in a situation where I'm going to see the ice cubes and I need them to look real, then I will shoot with real, but I want to make sure they're square. So I have a special ice cube tray that is square. I've had this 
this for years. I'll be sure to link it down below. But now if you spend any amount of time on the internet looking at drinks, looking at cocktails, you'll notice that a lot of them today are made with that really fabulous little like cubed crushed ice that you get at Sonic. I love that stuff. And so in that case, if that's the kind of ice you want to incorporate, which looks beautiful, it's got a lot of really great texture. They're small, so it gives you a lot of interest in your cocktail in terms of the styling. And so in that case, what I'll do is I will literally run to Sonic with a little freezy pack, load it up, bring it home, stick it in the freezer until I'm ready to shoot. Tip number three is don't use the garnish that comes in those little plastic clamshells. You know what I'm talking about, right? Because that stuff, what happens is they pick that hours, days before you're actually getting it. And so once you have placed it in the drink, like you put that basil in the beautiful muddled strawberry drink, and then all of a sudden you place that there, and five seconds later it's already starting to wilt and it looks super sad. And it just totally kills the whole mood of the scene. And so what you want to do is just get good quality garnish. What I do is I actually grow it here at home. And anybody who's like, I can't grow anything at home. I live in the Sonoran Desert. This is not a climate that is friendly for plants, but I still manage to grow my own basil, grow my own mint, thyme, oregano, things like that, so that when I am crafting these scenes, I can put a beautifully pristine selected piece of basil in there so that that drink looks absolutely fabulous and high-end and refreshing and something you wanna actually drink. And it also just buys you more time because like I have used stuff that I've picked out of my garden and I've then let the drink sit overnight because I finished up the shoot and I just didn't clean it up, came in the next morning and it was still looking good because it was freshly picked. Tip number four is use a funnel. That these are gonna be so much more helpful when you are pouring your drink so that you're not splattering around the edges, right? Cause you've got this scene all set up, you've got everything crafted, the glass has been cleaned, everything's ready to go until then you pour that drink in there, especially if it's like a wine glass or it's something with some like edges up on it so it makes it harder to pour into. And then all of a sudden those splashes are kicking up and then you've just ruined all of that hard work that you did in preparation. So if you use a funnel, it'll just help ensure that you've got smooth sailing and you don't have any splashing. Tip number five is to control your highlights and reflections, but don't eliminate them. I've heard people say, I just wanna get rid of it all together, but no, we still want those little bright reflections, those things that really give character and three dimensionality to our drink and make it look realistic, but we don't want the distracting reflections and highlights that really take our attention away from what is the key subject and that is the overall drink. And so what you have to keep in mind are where are all of the light sources in this room where I'm photographing this glass and so this glass right here of course we've got this big window and that is reflecting here in these major highlights that you can see down the sides but you have to consider if there were perhaps a window right here behind the camera that that would be a bright spot right here on the front of it so it's always something to keep in mind as you're shooting is where are all the lights where are all the windows and the things you're not even thinking of you're like oh there's a curtain over that but maybe there's just a little sliver of light that's peeking out you want to make sure to block those lights so that their path is not intercepting with the surface of the glass and reflecting back into your camera. So my recommendation for the easiest kind of go-to setup to ensure that you've got clean reflections, that you don't have a whole lot of craziness going on, is that you are next to a big window with a big diffuser in front of it so that you're not getting the reflection of maybe the car outside or whatever's behind that window. If you've ever taken those pictures, you've seen that and you're like, I can literally see what's going on outside in the glass unless artistically that's what you're going for. But otherwise, I'll throw a diffuser in front of the window, stick the glass next to it, and then shoot at a 90 degree angle so that it's being lit from the side. So you get that really nice soft highlight on the side. But then because of the way the glass works, you will also get a reflection on the opposite side, right? Because the inside is reflective as well and picking up that reflection from the window over on the other side. But if you're looking at it and you're studying the glass and you're seeing other highlights being picked up from other places, you just kind of have to do a a little bit of super sleuthing, a little bit of problem solving, trying to block and understand where is that light coming from and try to simplify the scene as much as possible. Now, if you find in lighting that way though, that you're getting some really deep shadows on the other side that you're not liking, that's when you bust out a nice bounce card that I usually keep pretty small so that we can kind of hide it so that you don't really see it coming into the reflection. Keep that off over to the side just to add some fill light, just to soften out those shadows. But now if you do that and you still not 
loving how the highlights are setting, especially in a glass like this, which is square, so it's not rounded, is that you might wanna try just moving the glass around because as you move it, the highlights will pick up in different spots. So find the spot that the highlight is most flattering to the drink, that it looks natural, that it doesn't look distracting. But if you do all those things and you're still frustrated and you're like, I just don't like how the highlights are reading and they're not falling where I want them to, then that's when you bust out a polarizing filter. A polarizing filter, I've got one right here. And these are super duper nifty and I'm actually gonna do a video all about polarizers, so stay tuned for that. But just know that this is a really great solution for managing highlights or reflections. It's also great if you're ever shooting on a reflective surface any sort of situation where you're dealing with glare, highlights, reflections, a polarizing filter is a super helpful tool. Tip number six then is to experiment with lighting it from behind. So if you don't love the side light, try backlighting it because what will happen is not only is that really helping you manage the highlights and reflections because the light source is coming from behind the drink, but this is especially great if you have got liquid in there that's very transparent because it will glow. This is especially beautiful for drinks with a lot of color colorful cocktails it will just make that really bright glowy sort of effect and really make your subject pop tip number seven is now what I call next level shenanigans like this is not something I do every time this is not required but this is something that can really help up your condensation game because to me a great drink has that absolutely fabulous pearly sparkly condensation on the outside of it and you really want to nail that but the problem with condensation is that it kind of disappears appears quickly on you if it's the real deal. So how do we replicate that? Well, we use matte spray and a 50-50 mix of glycerin and water. If you wanna know where to get glycerin, I've got that link down below, as well as this particular atomizer that we use to spray it on. So let me show you how I do it. So we start off with our clean glass, and if you spend any time, like I do, analyzing condensation on glasses as it happens naturally, which is, I mean, that's a whole weird thing, right? Like who sits there and looks at the condensation on the glass? <laughs> so what we want to do is create condensation just around the area where the drink will actually be. Once the drink is poured in here, that's where the condensation builds up. It doesn't really build up around the top where the drink isn't, and it doesn't build up around the bottom, right, on the base. Although we'll get some little drips and things going on there. But where it really resides is here in the middle. And you want to line just the top quarter or wherever you are not going to have the drink poured in. Now, of course, if you're going to pour the drink all the way to the very top then you can just spray the whole thing but in this case I'm only going to take it three quarters of the way up the drink so I want to leave that top quarter without spray on it so I'll cover that up and then from there I head on outside because we don't want to spray paint outside and you take your matte clear spray there's all sorts of different brands that you can get this is the rust-oleum and you stay kind of at a distance from the glass and you spray it on and it is going to create sort of a frosty effect so again, the key is to kind of stay further away from it so you get a fine mist. You don't want it to build up too much, but it's just gonna create sort of a frosty effect on there. You let that dry, and then from there, you take your 50-50 glycerin water mix and you build that up after, of course, the spray paint has dried, which takes all of like a minute or two. And so then we build up the glycerin, spray, 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 and you'll start to see it'll bead up, it'll start to pearlize. It is the coolest effect and it starts to look like condensation. And what is cool and why we use the glycerin is that this will actually hold for a good number of hours. Like actually, I did this drink right over here I sprayed this guy this morning and I could still shoot this. I mean, it started to kind of dry a little bit, but it's still got that condensation effect. So it gives you a lot more leeway and a lot more time to work with the drink. So if you want to get multiple angles, multiple shots in one scene, that you're not going to be worried about your condensation disappearing. So then at that point, you remove the stuff from the top and the bottom, and then you have this perfectly condensated drink. Now you might think, okay, this looks really fake and weird, but watch, once you actually pour the drink in there and you got to be very specific to make sure to only pour it up to the line where you finished shooting the spray all of a sudden it looks like real condensation that's so cool right so again that's next level shenanigans that's not something you have to do by any stretch but it is something that can make it really 
pop. And I would just forewarn you though, don't do this if these are like grandma's antique crystal glasses from somewhere very special because there, there is a little risk that you could ruin the glass because of the spray. But for the most part, every glass that I've ever done this to has actually washed up just fine with soap and water, but I just don't wanna be held responsible for damaging any antiques. And then tip number eight, very last tip, is to really become a student of studying drinks. If you really wanna take excellent drink shots, you need to expose yourself to excellent drink shots. And so there are some amazing magazines out there. I really love the work that you see in Imbibe Magazine and Punch, so I'm continually looking for inspiration there. And then I've created a Pinterest board for myself where I just collect images of cocktails, whether it's the garnish that I really love or the lighting that really speaks to me, the setting. you know. There's just certain things in images that make you go, oh, I love that. And so start to collect those images in a Pinterest gallery. So then when it's time to sit down and photograph a drink of your own, that you've got a beautiful collection of inspiration to work from. So hopefully you picked up a thing or two here today in this video and you're inspired to go shoot some drinks of your own. Thanks again to Fifth and Fox for these beautiful glasses and for sponsoring today's video. We couldn't do it without you guys. So they are linked down below if you wanna get a set of these yourself, because they are absolutely gorgeous so much fun great props to have in your collection but with that i hope you have a fantastic day i hope you stay out of trouble and i will see you again here real soon okay bye is it, video? it is video oh i never know what you're doing <laughs> i'm posing like a hey G -G. This, that's what i want happy tuesday wait let's do it it's a tuesday <laughs> my uh traditional Wait, only what? <laughs> Do a lot of finger wiggling? It's a snap. It's a snap that's really important at the end. That says you're ready.